which is why it probably doesn't look like I'm wearing much of any eye makeup, although I am. <laughs> Hi everyone, Kate here, and this week I'm going to be discussing how to do authentic 1930s eye makeup. Now, I'm going to be using actual historical sources as the basis for this, uh, rather than just relying on what's sort of considered stereotypically 1930s. I really should do one of these in like the 1920s one of these days, because oh golly do people get the 1920s wrong. <laughs> While I have used a variety of different sources, most of my information is actually going to be pulled from my 1931 Beauty in Question Answer... No, Beauty... Beauty's Question and Answer Dictionary. I always have trouble with that name. <laughs> the S is in the wrong place. <laughs> it's a Hollywood-based suggestion book and a pretty good overview of the time period. Now, as with any historical information... Just because one thing says so does not necessarily mean it was true across the board. Pre pretty much any sort of historical beauty rule or, you know, this is how people did things back then, you're going to be able to find sort of contradictory information to that. There wasn't just one way people did things, just like nowadays. I mean, I don't do my eye makeup like every other single person does their eye makeup. The point is, with any historical information, these are just going to be generalizations. I should also mention that most of my research is focused on the early to mid-1930s. That's kind of the part of the 1930s that I'm most interested in. But I would think most of what I'm talking about today would still be applicable to the late 30s. Okay, with all that preamble out of the way, let's get on to the makeup. To begin, we should probably talk about what kind of products you're going to need to do a 1930s look, and it's actually fairly minimal. That's the great thing about doing historical makeup, is that you really don't need many products. A typical 1930s eye makeup look is very simple, and requires only a mascara, a pencil or two, plus an eyeshadow for evening wear. One of the pencils should be a very dark shade, such as black, and the other should match your brows. As for mascara, pretty much any black mascara is going to do the job. Now, I have tried a number of historical mascara formulations in my quest to create the perfect cake mascara. And by perfect, I mean one that works. <laughs> uh, I, th I think I've just about cracked it. I've, I've been saying that for like two years, but it's going to happen. There's going to be a cake mascara video. <laughs> But with the formulations I've tried, a lot of them are actually very similar to just regular modern mascara, not necessarily cake mascara, but what at the time was called sort of cream mascara. You had cake mascaras, which were basically mascara with less water in it, and then you have cream mascaras, which have more water in them and make them more easily to, easy to spread. Uh, they typically have a shorter shelf life, but they're basically the same, just one softer than the other. Some people prefer cream to cake, some people prefer cake to cream. I like cake mascara because I don't wear mascara very often, and it, as I said, has a longer shelf life, but the choice is up to you. <laughs> now, on eyeshadow, this kind of actually does make a difference if you're using a modern versus a historical product. Most modern eyeshadows tend to be powders, whereas most historical eyeshadows were a cream-based formula. Cream eyeshadows blend differently, they apply differently, and they do give a different look. Cream eyeshadows tend to be a little glossier on the lids than a powder. If you have older or deep set eyes, it was recommended that you forego eyeshadow just entirely, likely due to how cream eyeshadow tends to smear and crease over time. In terms of color, your eyeshadow should generally match your eye color. <laughs> So like blue for blue eyes, brown for brown eyes. I've read that if you have like more than one color eye, like hazel eyes, you're supposed to get a like a brown and a green and then apply one over top of the other. <laughs> Basically just try to match your eye color as close as you can with your shadow. The eyeshadow I'm going to be using today is actually a 1919 formulation, but it's pretty close to what would have been used in the 1930s as well. I posted a short last week with an updated version of this eyeshadow recipe. Although you could go back, I think it was three or four years ago, and have a look at the original video I made that's a little more in-depth about the formulation. If you can hear me over the music! I did not know how to balance audio levels back then. Oh, uh, that's why I can't go back and watch any of my old content. It's 
painful. <laughs> now that we've discussed what products we're going to be using, let's get on to the actual application. As I've probably mentioned already, 1930s eye makeup was meant to be very subtle. While makeup was certainly less taboo than it had been in earlier decades, it wasn't something that was meant to be obvious either. A 1936 issue of Picture Goer warns that eyeshadow should not be noticeable. It must be applied with such care that nobody can possibly accuse you of looking artificial. So keeping that in mind, I'm now going to be demonstrating two makeup looks. We're going to be doing a daytime look and an evening look. Start by drawing a thin line with your black pencil along the lower lash line. This should be a very subtle line, and I like to smudge it just a bit with my fingers or brush to avoid any harsh edges. Follow by applying a light coat of mascara to the lashes. You may apply it to the lower lashes as well, but only use a very light touch at the tips. And that's actually it for the daytime look. That's pretty much what I have on my eyeshadows at the moment. I, I'm hoping from far away you kind of get the natural effect. I put on a little bit extra mascara because I was going to be on camera, but you know, pretty, pretty subtle, right? Now let's go on to the slightly more dramatic nighttime look. This time, we will start the makeup application with some eyeshadow. Apply a small amount of product to the center of the lid, close to the lash line. Use your fingers to gently blend outwards so that it fades away at the corners. Apply the black pencil along the lower lash line as before. You also sometimes see it on the upper lash line, but I find it a bit tricky to apply with the cream shadow, and as my book doesn't mention it, I'm going to go without today. Next, take an eyebrow pencil and fill in the brows. Use the pencil to slightly extend the brows at the end, say about a quarter of an inch, for that early 1930s brow shape. Okay, so in retrospect, this brow attempt didn't actually look too bad on camera, and I kind of wish I had just left it alone. However, in real life, my brows looked way, way too heavy for this time period. You didn't see many dark, heavy brows in the 1930s. Although you did see some women opting for a slightly more natural look than those super tiny Jean Harlow drawn-on things. Which I personally actually really like, but... I, I can't commit to a decade enough to do that to my eyebrows. <laughs> also, I don't think it would look good on me. I don't know. I think I think it would look a little harsh. It, it's a hard look. It looks really good on people it looks really good on. And the rest of us just, like, no. <laughs> As one of my sources did caution against filling in the brows and said only to use an eyebrow pencil if your brows needed the extra color, I decided to remove most of the pencil and just go au naturel. I certainly shouldn't want anyone accusing me of looking the least bit artificial. <laughs> Lastly, I'm applying a coat of mascara. This should be a heavier coating than the daytime one. If you're using a cake mascara, be sure to allow it to fully dry before fluttering those lashes about. 
Otherwise, you will get it everywhere. Luckily, it's easy enough to remove with a damp cotton swab. And that's it for the evening look. It's certainly heavier than the daytime look, although still relatively subtle by modern standards. And that really is the trick with 1930s makeup. Less is more, and it should enhance your features without the eye being drawn specifically to the makeup. You want people to think you're just naturally that beautiful. <laughs> I wear no makeup and I never curl my hair. <laughs> I wake up like this. <laughs> Oh, I kind of messed up my hair there. <laughs> now to round off your makeup look for a full face of 1930s makeup, use a face powder, a rosy blush, and a touch of lipstick. There seems to have been some debate about whether to do your eye makeup first or last, so I'm going to leave that entirely up to you. When I do mine, I typically do all my eye makeup except the mascara, then do the rest of my face, and then finish with the mascara. That way I can dust a little face powder over top of my cream eyeshadow to help it set, but it doesn't get stuck on my lashes. <laughs> Let's finish off the video with a look at some authentic 1930s makeup inspiration. <laughs> That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this look at 1930s eye makeup. If there are any other historical or vintage topics you want me to cover, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always open to suggestions. All my ideas are polled on my Patreon and my Patreons pick what actually gets made, but I do often do request polls where I take all the video requests that I've had and put them into a poll and see, see where the interest lies. So as always, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you. If there are any other historical or vintage topics you want me to cover, please let me know down in the description. No, not down in the description. You can't write down there. <laughs> That's only for me. Oh, I probably picked like the worst day to film. I am melting in this sweater. <laughs> Should I should have worn something else. But you know, 1930s style, well, from a 1930s pattern. Haha, -ha, which I meant, oh, I mentioned this in my quickly made um, video, I think. I think in this, at that point it was still in pieces, but it's all done now. I usually have a brooch with it, but I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> couldn't be bothered. <sighs> oh, even now I'm not sure if my audio levels are okay. I keep looking over here because I have like my Audacity file because I'm like using a separate mic, but... I'm not sure if the mic's a little close. If it's if it's much farther away though, you can't hear me when I'm talking quietly. But if I talk too loudly, I blow out the mic. There's a lot of technical stuff with YouTube videos. Ah, <laughs> oh, my little alfalfa curl's back. Stay down, alfalfa curl. See it like it wants to do its own thing. Just wants <laughs> That's a good look. Okay. Down, alfalfa curl. Down. <laughs>